Hey you guys, welcome back to Michael Clareda Arts. I am of course Michael Clareda, the curator of this channel. Um, so today we're going to do something that I think uh, those of you who have been with me for a while can appreciate, and that's creating a keepsake card. I do keepsake cards for unique um, circumstances, such as birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, or, you know, um, special events like graduation, um, or whatever, you know, comes along through the pipeline. And these keepsakes are done traditionally, and I do the traditional art using um, typically like a color erase pencil or graphite pencil, and I work on watercolor, and I utilize markers. Um, a lot of the artwork that you see behind me, like right here, boop, 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 right there, um, is traditional. And I like doing traditional art. Pretty much a lot of the stuff around my studio is traditional because it keeps me rooted in the, um, in the original kind of path that I was on whenever I was in school. I originally, whenever, you know, this is over 20 years ago, uh, 22, 23 years ago, 24 years ago, I originally wanted to be uh, an animator, um, whether it be for Disney, Warner Brothers, whoever, uh, traditional animator drawing. And I really pushed myself in those early days to get familiar with the traditional mediums, um, you know, media such as, uh, you know, pencil, graphite, watercolor. Uh, oil, acrylic. So I always fall back on those things because eventually what will probably end up happening in my career, I'll kind of go away from digital and I'll go back to my roots. That's something that I've always wanted to do, whether it's, you know, creating um, original pieces for sale or as gifts. And that's exactly what I did uh, today. Um, I did a keepsake for an individual that my son uh, goes to school with and he was graduating um, high school and going on to the next level which is adulthood um, and uh, you know I was asked to do uh, a keepsake so that's what today's video is I'm putting it on time lapse because uh, something like this takes a while you know I get a lot of questions sometimes that's typically the first <laughs> first thing that people ask whenever you show them a piece of artwork how long did that take you and then no matter what time you give them, it's always like, wow. You know, I, I think there's kind of a disconnect between effort versus return whenever it comes to artwork. You know, you can have somebody that's really fast. Oh, they only took me 10, 15 minutes. And then you're like, well, you know, if it only took you 10, 15 minutes, then, you know, you must not get paid as much as somebody that it took two, three, four hours for. And I think that's kind of a hiccup in that thought of, uh, you know, artistic understanding and experience because somebody that has 20 years of experience is going to do things much quicker than somebody that has, you know, maybe two weeks of experience. And, and uh, you know, in terms of effort, the effort is still there. It's just already been you know, that person with 20 years of experience has already made tons of mistakes, so they kind of understand the pathway um, to the end result. And this card probably took me between sketch and finish, maybe about 40 minutes uh, total. And you're going to be like, wow, <laughs> which is hilarious. You know, I could have, and I always tell this in my videos, I could have spent so many hours upon a piece rendering it, rendering it, but uh, as a professional, I have to kind of weigh the uh, time versus return and since I'm not being paid for this it is a gift then I have to uh, kind of balance and do the best that I can in the time that I've allotted in terms of budget so uh, today I'll be working on watercolor paper um, cans on watercolor paper and it's a uh, nine I think it's nine by twelve nine by twelve yes nine by twelve sheet and what I do since it's um, a greeting card is all folded in half and I'll talk a little bit about that near the very end as I do a wrap up. So, um, you know, this channel's been around a while, I believe since 2014. So we're looking at nine years. I'm coming up on 10 years in 20, uh, 2024. Um, you know, 10 years, gosh, I can't even, I can't even surmise, uh, the beginning, uh, of this adventure as I started, you know, with grand visions of great things happening, becoming a super successful YouTuber, but the reality is, is I, I'm perfectly happy with having you guys uh, as my co-pilot and uh, we're on this adventure together and uh, man, coming up on 10 years as a YouTuber, um, I've had successes, I've had failures and I'm definitely looking forward to the next 
you know, 10 years, who knows where YouTube's going to take us. And, uh, man, we, we definitely, um, have put out quite a few videos. We're at like 635. So hopefully you can get some knowledge from, uh, me in those videos. But anyway, enough Gavin, let's go ahead and get into the time lapse, and I'll do some narration here and there and there's some beast music. So, um, enjoy the process. All right, so this is me at my traditional drawing desk, and this is kind of my setup. I've got a laptop stand um, that I utilize uh, as kind of a makeshift drawing surface, and I can adjust that angle as needed, and it's um, something that I've kind of adapted as I've progressed through. You know, I used to have that you know, the huge drawing desk, as you see underneath, um, made of wood. And I've got uh, another drawing desk over on the right that you can't see that's out of frame that I've used in the past for traditional drawing and video um, capture. However, this particular setup really lends itself to doing greeting cards. Um, you know, I, I hesitate on giving people kind of a absolute pathway because in art, there is no absolutes, right? We all have methodologies and, and things that we do to accomplish tasks uh, depending on the time variable and this uh, really just lends itself to you know my um, my dynamic and my methodology so as you see it is Bigfoot <laughs> um, the person in question over there on the right um, the individual really likes Bigfoot he's an outdoorsman um, overall and he just likes you know, the whole mythology and, oh gosh, cryptozoology, you know, all of those things from, you know, aliens to, uh, you know, Bigfoot, Chupacabra, whatnot, and, and he's really somebody that kind of speaks true to what I like, and that's the legends and the storytelling of humanity about these mythical creatures, um, you know, that people have dismissed, but also swear to it because nothing else can explain you know what i see in the wild um but yeah i i love doing <clears throat> excuse me bigfoot and uh, i've actually done bigfoot professionally you know for apparel and uh you know for collectibles so this is something that's right up my alley um yeah it says i believed in you congrats <laughs> so yeah super fun um you know, I'm working with a call erase pencil. Those of you who don't know what call erase pencils are, they're more or less a wax-based erasable pencil that uh, whenever you uh, photocopy it, um, it turns out uh, either black or disappears depending on, you know, um, what kind of printer, or not printer, what kind of copy or scanner that you're using. So. I like using color erase, first of all, uh, instead of graphite, because they don't really smear that much. Now, if you were to look at my hand, you would see some smearing, but it really doesn't, it pales in comparison to what a traditional graphite pencil would have. Um, you know, and now I'm getting on to inking the image. So you did see, uh, actually you'll see here in a few minutes, I take the eraser over there on the right hand side, those rubber erasers, and I go back and I remove some of that photo blue just because I don't want that really shining through. Now, case in point, I, I've used um, you know, the photo blue, I've used red, I've used uh, green, I've used tan. It just depends on what your preference is. There is no right or wrong. And a lot of times that blue, whenever you mix in uh, the markers, which I'll apply here in just a moment, the blue lends itself to giving your... Um, creature or whatever you're drawing, uh, you know, kind of a blue tinge because the alcohol goes in and it mixes with the blue. So definitely be mindful of that whenever you go and do, um, if you utilize alcohol markers. <clears throat> um, I do use alcohol markers and I've got kind of a, I don't want to say an addiction, maybe it's a small addiction to alcohol markers. I don't sniff them or, or eat them or anything, but I like using markers because I, 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 it's very similar. I use markers very similar to the way um, that I utilize digital illustration. I'll go in and I'll do my rough sketch and then I'll put the layer on transparency. I'm talking about in digital uh, environment. And then I'll go in and I'll start blocking in color and I'll use different layer transparencies such as um, 
overlay, multiply uh, in Photoshop. And what's great about markers is depending on, you know, especially alcohol markers because you can blend them. And putting in local color, that's color that doesn't have light or shadow on it, and then going in and either removing uh, some of that some of that alcohol in the paper, uh, you know, removing it out or applying additional color hues uh, to shadow, similar to what you would do uh, in the digital environment, I can get a really cool effect. And what you're seeing now is I'm taking that eraser and I'm going in and removing some of that photo blue because, you know, even though the sketch is, is still there underlying, um, you know, I don't want it to show too much through because I do want it to be a finished piece of art. So now, just going in and putting in some hue uh, into the paper. Now, this is watercolor paper, and it doesn't really bleed through. Um, and you can see my test paper in the background um, because every marker is going to be different. Every brand is going to be different. Saturations are different. I I was a very big proponent um, early on in my career of Copic markers and. You know, going through um, the generations of different manufacturers of alcohol markers, I realized Copic is really good, and at the end, they're the industry standard. However, they're expensive. They're about $9.99 to $10 to $11 a piece. And when you need to buy like 200 of them, um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so I've kind of branched out and I utilize Prisma markers. I use Ohuhu markers. I use Windsor & Newton. Um, Copic, of course, um, as well as some of the, like the XP pen makes a good marker. And, you know, I've even gone so far as going to the dollar store and checking out some of their offerings. And, yeah, I've done some reviews and whatnot. So, what you're seeing now is me just, you know, wrapping things up, putting some highlights in, and just, you know, enjoying the process. And, you know, putting a simple background in that kind of shows that they're in the wilderness, sort of. Um... And yeah, I just really enjoy doing this particular illustration. Again, about 35, 40 minutes. To yeah, and 35, 40 minutes is not really a lot of time, you know, not only to do artwork, but also color it, you know, concept development. You know, I did actually, you know, I, you could say that it took longer than that because I did an initial sketch on my iPad and that took about, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. So total, in this illustration is about an hour, which is not too bad. Um, like I said before uh, in the intro, you have to balance things, uh, right? Because I could go in and draw every single piece of fur, you know, every fold, and there is a balance. And also that kind of lends to your style cue. Um, I remember being in college and everybody really being so concerned about style. And that style develops a lot of times out of necessity of your process in terms of time um, relationships. So. Maybe your style is very loose and stuff because you, you, you know, have a lot of work and you need to do things quickly. And, you know, as an illustrator professionally, you really have to gauge the time and say, you know, uh, done and not perfect. And a lot of times, most, well, I don't want to say most, a lot of professional illustrators know when that time is. But uh, early, you know, uh, illustrators and artists and graphic designers and, and whatnot they continue to pour in and kind of overwork things. And a lot of times you have to find that balance, um, you know, balance between time and effort uh, and also return. So you don't want to spend 70 hours on an illustration that only pays, you know, 150 or 200, $300. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am doing the final uh, little logo. I really enjoy doing this. And this is where I'm going to land with this one today. So this was just... You know, end of the year, we always have so many end of the year school-wise, so many responsibilities, and I get, you know, tons of requests to do cards, and I, you know, I do keepsakes and whatnot, but this one was for a, a particular uh, individual um, that my son is friends with, and he's moving on. He graduated, so he's a big fan of Bigfoot, and uh, I just thought this was appropriate, right? Um, just something fun, Bigfoot telling him. I believed in you, congrats, and he's in his, um, you know, he's in his graduation uniform and uh, has his diploma. So, of course, on the back, I've got my company, Shooting Star Greetings uh, 23, um, and everything is hand done. So, yeah, this is on watercolor paper. I used, um, 
I used markers. Uh, I've got a myriad of different marker uh, brands. Uh, they're all very similar. Copic is probably the industry standard, but I like kind of branching out because Copics are $10 a piece and I'm cheap. So <laughs> I used Ohuhu on these. Um, I also have used uh, Master's Touch, which is available in Michaels. I'm not Mac Michaels, maybe. No, Master's Touch is Hobby Lobby. And of course, um, Copic markers, Prisma markers, Windsor Newt markers. It doesn't really matter to me just as long as they work and they don't run out. Colors are vibrant. Um, you see this right here also is real vibrant. And I've, I've talked about these particular markers before, or not markers, these pencils before. These are Koh-i-Noor dry markers. So it gives um, a nice vibrancy, right? to the um, background and it kind of makes things jump and I use it in highlights to really accentuate color. So anyway, that was today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed um, you know, the drawing process and just having fun, right? Making keepsakes, doing things, um, you know, to give to other people uh, instead of just going and buying something, right? You can go down to the store and buy something and that's fine. You can also do things digitally and print them out, but I like doing these because, you know, it's just, it takes about two hours, an hour and a half to two hours to do them. And it just shows the people who receive them, you know, how much you care. So please like and subscribe if you like what you see. And as always, go outside and do something fun today. That thing you've been putting off for a while. And maybe it's drawing, um, uh, drawing something. Maybe it's spending time with a loved one. I just think that, uh, you know, we're coming up on a holiday weekend. So just go out and have some fun. Get some sunshine. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.